All right, here's the deal. I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with the caddy. I got my amps over here. Got a fuse holder, a distro block. Working on a couple of ideas. Got my audio control, DM810 ready to go. Arguably the world's most badass amplifiers right now, currently. But I don't have my excess power Titan 8 batteries yet. And I don't want to start this without knowing where those are going, what they look like, how big they are. Wiring is a big thing. I even got my Sky High wiring over here. I got my black and white one out ready to go. So here's the deal. I know I really want to get this system installed, but I got another problem that you guys probably don't know about because I don't talk about it very much. Let's go check out the problem I'm speaking of. And we got the Tahoe sitting over here. Sitting pretty, just like she always does. But what good's pretty if nothing's really working? Actually, everything works great. Everything still works fine. But my batteries that are buried underneath the car finally took their this toll. car always sits on a charger. It always sits on an Intella charger to be exact. So I know that it's usually pretty good. But if you have a couple old batteries in your mix, those things will be a load on your system. So last January while I was in Vegas, they got knocked off of their trickle charger, off their life support, and the batteries died. I came back, they were at about two volts. There's really no bringing them back when they're that bad. You might get lucky if you bring one down that low, one time maybe, but yeah, these batteries, they've been around for a long time. They've done great, but they're, they're gone. I just got off the phone with Scotty from XS Power. We are gonna replace every single battery in here with group 31 14 volt batteries. Currently there's D3100s, 12 volt group 31 batteries. We're gonna do group 31 14 volt batteries in Not here. Not only do I wanna replace all the batteries in here and finally get this thing to start again. And by the way, once it starts, the system's gonna be playing right away. The system works fine. The batteries just died out. Once I start pulling things apart, you know I'm gonna to wanna to do other things to the system. I need a new box. I need one more updated with some of the SMD stuff that we're making now. I'll probably want to run some new power wire as well because this power wire is all turfed out. It's been, it's been in there for 15, 16 years and I've learned a lot since then, obviously. We got four Mechman alternators in here. They've been in there since the day that I put them in. Never had one problem with These them. These things have lasted and they're still good. But I think I'm ready for a new one. I want some of those new McMahon alternators they make so now. So it's not going to be a 100% brand new system redo. The doors obviously are going to stay the way they are. Mostly everything, the dash is gonna be just the way it is. But a few updates like batteries, wiring, some alternators. I may even put some new shoes and socks on this thing because those U255s, as great as they are, even the plastic dip is still on there. They're tired, it's time for something new. I'm gonna make myself love this truck again. Let's take a little look at it before I shut this video off. Move the truck over to the other bay. So dusty. Half pass, baby. Half pass. All right, I got it jump started today. Got everything working. Air's filling up. System's playing. Those batteries are completely dead, though. Any kind of pull on them, they're down to nothing. Sorry, man. All right, so 
What? Pull the voltage down so hard that everything shut down. So it's only running off the alternators. Those things are getting warm. Out of everything in here still works just like the first day. It's last pretty hard actually. Batteries are dipping hard, but it's still hitting. I don't know what all I'm gonna change. No change in the batteries. Oh, I want to fix some of the wiring. But for the most part, it just needs batteries. We're back on the road again. We're shipping today, so hopefully they'll be here in a couple days. Time for some new 14 volt Group 31 batteries, excess power. I think you guys thought I was joking. I ain't joking. Look at this. 10 Group 31 14 volt batteries are here. And they are going to be in there soon. Time to start unwrapping. So you're probably thinking, man, this guy works late, but actually it's uh, yeah, 5.30 in the morning. So we're getting it. We're going after it with the early birds. I don't even know where to start with this. I'm gonna have to start pulling all this stuff apart just to get to these batteries. Definitely not looking forward to pulling all this apart. That's been in there since who knows when. Chili cook off 2009. This is out of that Ink magazine. I oh, it is. Underneath this thing lies five batteries. We got newspaper. We got tissue paper. We got popcorn. We got broken CDs. All kinds of stuff. So when I remove this panel, I should be able to get to the batteries that have been in there for a very long time. And I got those right there getting ready to go in. All I know is right now I'm dying to see what these look like. Doesn't look that bad from the bottom, but as soon as I pull this cover off, it's not very pretty. You want to see what this is? You're gonna have to tune into the next episode. And we're out of here. Wow.
fire in there. I didn't even know it. You disconnected up front? Yeah, it's all disconnected. I decided that I want to pull all the wires out of here all the zero gauge at least the zero gauge to the bus bars and run some brand new bus bars and some brand new fuse holders so in order to do that it's got to come out front to rear which is fine by me because I'm ready for some new stuff some 2020 style wiring now, I'm not 100% sure I'm leaving the amps that are in there in there but I do know that they're one of my favorite amps of all time and I do love the hell out of them I just don't know if I'm ready to change them out or not yet but in the meantime, I'm gonna get all the main wiring done. I'm gonna get the alternators out. I got four brand new Mechman 400s on the way. They should be here, I don't know, a week or so. And we're just gonna take it from there, put the new batteries in, and hopefully what I did earlier won't ever happen again, because now I see what's happening. I have about seven runs of zero gauge, positive and negative running from the front to the back. The whole problem is it's all different sorts of brands over all the years. I have wires on top of wires, it's pretty nice, but there's a couple of mismatches in there and it drives me nuts. And I think that I want to redo it anyways for 2020, like I was saying. In order to do that, I'm going to have to put the truck up on the lift and get to all the wires underneath and slowly start dismantling them. I'm going to pull them all out, and as soon as my new Sky High wire gets here, I'm going to start putting it back in. It should be proper after I'm all done with this. all these sounds happening around the shop want to see how this mic is doing loud in here hope I can only hear my voice if so that'd be really good test it one two three test it one two three So here I am in my editing lab, aka my game room, aka my computer desk, and I realize I don't have any sound. Well what happened was, is you know, I get really tired of the CNC machines and the dust collector and the vacuums and all sorts of things in the shop making noise, so, so I tried to use this Sony microphone I had from another camera on this camera to see if it was any better. And to do that I gotta go in the menu and actually choose it. I tried it, it didn't make any difference, sounded just about the same, so I yanked the microphone off of there and I put it in a box and went about my business. Well, I forgot to put the mic back on to the camera mic in the configuration. So all I have now is a whole bunch of silence. I guess I can always narrate some of it. Oh, well, sorry about that. I'm trying to let that happen again. We're all good this time though. I can see the little bars moving while I'm talking. All right, so basically what you're looking at here is the bottom of my battery lid. And at some point it must have arced it must have touched I think I was a little bit over ambitious when I first made this because I don't think I really needed to do a countersunk pocket but I just wanted to take it to the next level and make it real nice and uh, well I guess I got a little too close to those positive posts a lot closer than I thought I was going to be if you look real close you can see where the cables have been resting up against that second skin sound deadener and three of the wires were actually up against it the whole time. You can see the indentations. To be honest, I'm kind of lucky the other ones didn't arc too. This thing flat out burned a hole through the sound dender, through the sheet metal, and then almost through the sound dender again. And who knows how long it's been like that. 
but it never died, so I didn't have any idea. Let's go ahead and jump into some time lapse. Let's pull down these wires. We got about 15 one aughts to pull down, plus some zero gauge, and it's all different types, it's all different colors, and it all works, but it's not as pretty as I'd like it to be. For some reason I didn't show a lot about this part right here, but I did pull the four Mechman alternators out, the ones that have been there the whole time. Those are 350 amp alternators color matched to the vehicle. They all still work. They've made it the whole time, no problem, even with the bad batteries, which is a miracle. Right now I went ahead and left one of the alternators in the vehicle so I could start it and move it around. No problem at all, it's charging, we're good to go. Back to the back here, as you can see, I've got all the zero gauge running from the amplifiers to the bus bars that aren't there anymore. I'm gonna keep these wires because they're in perfect condition. They're two watt cable running from the 2500 BDCPs over to the bus bars. There's actually, there's actually 10 positive two watt cables and 10 negative two watt cables along with some four gauge and it's all in perfect condition. My solder joints are in perfect condition. Everything's great except for that one wire that roasted. So I got no reason to take this out. All the fuses were even good too. The reason why those fuses didn't pop is because that bar on the actual positive terminal was touching and there was no fuse that was gonna stop that. So lesson learned, it's gonna be fixed. We're good to go and I'm lucky my truck didn't burn down. Let's crack open these XS Power Group 31 14 volt batteries. If you're wondering what's so cool about these things, wondering why I chose these over the new lithium craze that's going on, of course the lithium is badass, it's the way to go, everybody's doing it. I will be running lithium, XS Power Titan S6s in the Escalade, but I wanted to keep with this Group 31 battery size. And I've always wanted to have 14 volt batteries in the Tahoe, I just didn't have the right size. Now they've got the Group 31s, and these things actually rest at 15 point something, and they charge almost 17 volts, right around 17 volts. So I am gonna have the extra power that I want. Although I won't have any weight savings, it doesn't matter, it's been like this forever. I will have a lot of power on hand, and that's what I'm after more than anything else. And these batteries do weigh a lot, but the truck is bagged. It doesn't even mind the amount of weight that's back there. It's been like that for years. So here we are, 10 Group 31 14 volt batteries. That is a lot of power. A lot more power than there was in here before. So no matter what, I'm gonna see improvements. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna love it. Look at it, look at it.
hole is ready to go, ready to pop some more batteries right into it. They should drop right in there. They're the exact same size, but you never know. One of the things that I did to avoid that ever happening again is I turned it around and I put the negatives towards the front and the positives towards the back. When I first welded this battery rack in, I guess I must have put a slight little slope into it so it does have an angle. It shouldn't, I mean, I don't know why it does, but it has a slight little angle from the front to the back and that's actually gonna be beneficial because now, so now that positive terminal is really far away from the bottom of that cover that I'm about to put back on it. And we should never happen again. They all fit in here really nice and we should have a certain degree of safety this time. All right, here what I'm doing is I'm testing the resting voltage directly out of the box, directly from the factory. I've never touched these with the charger. You saw me open them and drop them right in. We're looking at 15.25, 15.24, 15.25, Fifteen point two four and fifteen point two five. So I would say those are pretty consistent with each other, and the batteries are all the exact same age, and you can't go wrong with that. So again, these batteries will be charging right around seventeen volts when it's all set up. The amps are just gonna love it. I'm sorry I had to narrate the last part of this video. It's kind of lame, but thanks for joining me. We're gonna have more updates coming real soon. Subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I will catch you on the next one. I'm out. Check this out. I got my Mechman alternators, my four 400s for the Tahoe. Can't wait to open these things up. And then I gotta hit the drawing board and whip up a brand new alternator bracket for them. I've already got an alternator bracket, but I want a brand new one, my style, from scratch. For right now, let's crack these things open. Man Elite Series 400 amp alternators for the Tahoe. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know I've had four alternators in my ride for almost 15 years. So this ain't my first day doing this, but I'm gonna have to make me a brand new bracket. I don't want that old contraption that's in there anymore. I've got CNC's, I got lasers. I'm Actually, to be badass. totally honest, I've been working on the bracket for a week. I've got the prototype sitting over there. It's made out of acrylic. I'm getting ready to burn it into some steel and make it look badass, make it work properly. But these things just arrived, so I'm gonna open them up and see how they fit on the prototype bracket. Once I know they fit, then we'll go steal. Alexa, unmute. This is nice, I need a lot of this. Money from this lava spit. Try to watch shrine, but they make it rush it. Make the X Men hot as shit. Modern day apocalypse word. Hundred bands with them checks, 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 hundred bands with them. Get a stack a million, that's amazing now. Hundred bands with them checks. We got another box over here. I wonder what this could be. Actually, I know what this is. These are my external regulators for these. Typically, you don't need external regulators, but I'm gonna be pushing high 16 volts, 17 volts on these 14.5 volt batteries. So we're gonna need a little bit more control over them for that. Let's see what these bad boys look like. Oh, 
Look at that beautiful thing. Four hundred and six. Get the harnesses in here. We got some detailed instructions. I don't really need those. It ain't my first day doing this, but it's good to see a company that gives you some info instead of just sending it to you and hoping for the best. with each other. Even the Mechman tape is good on these boxes. It's giving my steak knife a little bit of trouble. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Those things are beautiful. I cannot wait to put them in my Tahoe. Well, let's check out the main obstacle, and that's the bracket. Like I said, I've had a bracket in there for a long time. It was kind of a contraption, but now I've designed the real deal. This thing should be super strong. It should look great when it's all done. It's not gonna be done by the end of this video, but you'll see what I'm up to. Let's head over to the computer. I'll show you what I've been working with, and then I'll show you this little sample piece right here. And then it's gonna be time to zap it, turn it into steel. And then from there, who knows? We got wires for days. So I spent a little over a week or so drawing, trying stuff, drawing again, trying more stuff. Running back and forth to the Tahoe with a caliper, with a pair of scissors, with some cardboard. And lots of CAD work. I pretty much changed up the way I was going to do this about four times. So there's lots of different tries. I got a whole box of prototypes over there. Some were good, some weren't and some were great and then I redesigned it and they're not they just don't exist anymore so this is what we got right here Not trying to turn this unboxing video into a big long video, but just to let you know, I do laser engrave these alternators for Mechman alternator. We got a bunch of 370s here. I've done over a hundred in the past couple days, plus a thousand of their pulleys. So, needless to say, I've got a lot of cases to reach in and grab and use for my little prototype. It's a lot easier than busting out the full heavy alternator. So not knowing exactly how I'm gonna do this bracket, I didn't film hardly anything. I just went to work. And once I was happy with it, I decided it was time to make a video. And then my stuff showed up to unbox. So here we are. This is what my prototype bracket looks like right now. Before I turn it into steel.
So if for some reason you're starting this video in the middle, this is not going to be an acrylic bracket, although that does look badass. It probably would not hold. It's just easier for me to prototype this with some scrap acrylic that I have over there than it is to break out quarter inch steel or whatever. It's super heavy. This is nice. We're mounted to the engine in about four or five spots. We got these special standoffs done right here. Shout out to my buddy Kong. Just a little something on. You set up the height. Yeah. Just want to take a second and thank my good buddy Kong. He's got a great metal fabrication shop. He's got more CNC's than I even can think about even looking at. Makes my shop look like child's play. But you know what? This guy always jumps in and helps me anytime I need it. It's like little tiny stuff that I might need right away. This is us on a Saturday evening. He called me up and said, hey, if you want these things, come on over and grab them. And I'm like, okay. So I just want to say thanks to Kong at Fast Precision, Sacramento, California. He does make some of the greatest stuff ever and i know who to go to when i need something done right thanks a lot kong i appreciate you to the fullest you know that man my old bracket didn't have a lot of support it was just all kind of bolted together had a couple little steel parts it was all right it lasted a long time but it's not going to be anything like this all the way down to these custom standoffs we got four flat spots right in the middle of all of those so you could fit a 5 8 wrench on them and tighten them down you'll see what those do here soon all right let's grab this and take it to the Tahoe before I mount all those alternators up let's see how this mock-up looks inside the actual truck so there's nothing in here right now Something like that. Should bolt right in with no problem. I might even be able to put them all on the bracket and then mount them in. That would be extremely epic. Ask anybody with multiple alternators to put them all in at the same time and then wire them would be nice. But this thing's designed to where I can do them one at a time as well with pretty much ease. So since I can't wait anymore to see what this looks like, I'm going to pull this thing apart. I'm going to put the 400s on this prototype bracket and We'll see what that looks like. Then I'll bust out some steel and I'll make the real thing. There's a couple things I want to do to it to make it look real nice. I just can't do it right this second today. But I still want to make this video. Beautiful. Oh, we're going to be seeing this Laguna laser soon. This shouldn't take but a couple of minutes. And while I'm pulling it apart, you'll get an idea how it all works. It's not too complicated after the drawings have already been done, of course. Those faces came in handy, but now they're done. Ready to put the real ones on there. As you can see, we got nuts, bolts, standoffs, and the stars of the show. These bad boys. So I was thinking to myself, let's slap these things in that acrylic bracket and take a look at it. But why not grab some steel and cut it on the fiber laser and see what it looks like in the raw. So let's fire this bad boy up. I do have full sheets of just about every thickness of metal I use over there but this is my little scrap side some stuff that i've been working on a little bit we got some 12 gauge stainless we got some 10 gauge stainless over here and uh let me see we got some quarter inch steel right here 
So it's a nice little chunk that should work good. Believe me, this quarter inch looks thin, but it ain't no joke. I'm gonna have a hard time by myself getting this in the machine. There you have it, quarter inch brackets, nice clean cut, they'll probably spend a little bit of time in the deburr machine just to make the edges a little softer, that's pretty nice. One last thing to do before I end this video, we're going to mount these alternators on that steel bracket, see how it feels. off the laser it's not shiny it's not beautiful or anything like that yet it's got some fingerprints on it but this is what it is and all by the way this thing's extremely heavy look at that much nicer with just the covers much easier too I don't know if you can see there or not but I'm gonna hold that up There's the back. All right, that bracket is built. I'm getting ready to drop it in and see how it looks, see how it works. Of course, I'm probably gonna make it one more time when I'm all done, after I modify it just a little bit. Looking at right here. Two quarter inch steel plates four alternators and uh, some other parts. All right, one thing left to do, bring it over the Tahoe and see how it fits. More than likely, I'm gonna put the bracket in and then the alternators, but I'll be able to see how it fits right now. God damn. Got even heavier with the pulleys.
heavy ass end of that over there. I'm gonna grab it over there, grab, I'm gonna have you grab this. Oh. Set this in. I'll get, you grab the, just grab the back, I'll grab the front. Okay. Okay, we're gonna set it in just like this. Like this. Ouch. Good. I think I got it. Uh, okay, it's got to be lifted up and brought that way, son. Okay. Oh, so I got to pull that bolt out. All right, we got a bolt in the way. We got to take it out of here. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be beautiful. Look at it. Let's take it out of here. Let's set it down right here on this. Okay, so this, right, this hole right here is going to this hole right here, okay? Oh, this is good. Give it a little twist. This is the right one for that. Let me go grab the right bolt. You can let it go. I'll okay. just set it in there. I think it should just stay, right? Grab the right bolt. All right, I got my old belt on here, but it looks like it's going to need another six inches or so so i'm gonna have to go get that but for now i have enough to turn them and see if they even work see if i'm lined up it looks pretty good it's lined up pretty nice ready bud yeah actually doing real good. It's not even touching down there. Cool. Alright man. Time to go find me a longer belt and start hooking up some wires. So far this is a great success. So I'm gonna need a longer belt which I've already ordered so I can make it onto that idler pulley and get all that bite. That's coming. Got my external regulators right here. That's a platform that I just grabbed off the shelf, but I'm gonna make one custom for them to sit on. So I am gonna to have to pull this thing apart again, which is no big deal. Those things will unbolt and just fall right out as soon as I unbolt them. And from there, I can run all the wires super nice, get everything wired up really clean, drop them back in, start the car, we should be charging. Of course, if you missed the last video where I unboxed all my batteries, there's gonna be 14 volt batteries in here, which sit at 15.2 volts, charging right around 17 or so. 16, eight, 17. This thing should put out a lot of voltage and look good doing it. So that'll be the next thing I do coming up soon. Stay tuned for that. I'm out of here. That's how you turn an eight rib into a six rib. Hell yeah.
see how it looks. So yesterday I cleaned this thing up, prepped it, and bedlined it. Looks good front to back, both sides. No rest, but it's kind of boring. It's just black. So that's the reason why I made this piece right here. So it's gonna go right over the top, little overlay. Some of these holes have to be bigger than the others because there's a spacer going in here for the bearings. I can't let them be affected by this metal at all because they're right exactly where they're supposed to be. So it should look good. It's pretty. I got so far both the regulators have a spot now of course I'm not using acrylic to mount them this is just a prototype and there's a couple of adjustments that I still need to make to it but I'm almost there right now looking good it's exactly what I needed right here so after I make those few little changes that I saw I need to make we're gonna transfer this thing over to a piece of stainless and then mount it in and then it'll be permanent it'll be in there I'll be ready to run some wires and get this thing charging. Everything's fitting in real nice. Slide right over the top of those stock little studs. I'll be able to bolt that right in, all three of them. We got Mechman Elite Series, 1600 amp, tucked away. When this is all done, I'll put that brace back in where it belongs. All right, time to bring this over to the fiber laser, make a stainless bracket, and we'll call this done. We can start hooking some wires up. Let's go see what kind of metal we have sitting over here. Got just about everything I need. Let's see if I have a big enough piece of scrap. And it looks like I do. We got some 10 gauge stainless here. 
I think the 12 gauge is probably more than enough as well. I just have to do this out of 12 gauge. Let's just do this out of 12 gauge. That's plenty. 16 gauge here. They ain't gonna do it. Enough left in this seat. Oh, there's hardly anything left on here. That'll do it. over to the co2 laser when i took this prototype out i didn't move the rest of it so this should drop right into its spot the exact same spot but first i'm gonna have to put some stuff on here that drive for a second and we'll get our etch on so I could have etched this into the metal with the fiber laser but it would have been more like a scratch 
using the sear mark, I'll get a nice bold black outline. So let's run this, see how it does. Hard to do this with just one hand. Just looking good though. Of course, you know me, I want to make this as difficult as possible. I could just go with some Phillips head, but we want these nice Allens. Because I have them. Because I can. The stainless is definitely harder to tap than the aluminum. I know that goes without saying, but I don't tap a lot of threads into stainless, so I wasn't expecting it to be that much of a pain in the butt, but I got it done, and I think it's gonna work out good. Of course we got these middle ones right here that need a fastener but I'm gonna put those in after these regulators are on because they overlap.
this thing's damn near perfect. About as perfect as I can expect from somebody like myself. So let's go drop it in the vehicle. Call this video a wrap for the day. Do some wiring tomorrow. What used to be this right here is now this right here. See how it fits. Perfect. Just perfect. Still clears. That's good. We're all done now. That's it. Looking good. Nice and solid, ain't going nowhere. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up bright and early. I'm gonna start running a few wires, get this thing charging, get the four alternators synchronized with each other, get the two regulators synchronized, and we should be good to go. Then I'll be ready for that big ass sky high two aught, which is actually closer to three aught, maybe a little bit bigger. Stay tuned, that's coming up next, soon. And thanks for watching if you did. what time it is. It's time to say goodbye to the fan. time I've been wanting to put electric fans in the Tahoe I just never really had any immediate reason but I definitely been meaning to for well over 10 years I just haven't gotten around to it apparently nobody else noticed either because in the entire time I've been posting about this Tahoe not one person has ever said a word to me about it until I took that fan shroud off to work on those new quad alternators so yes the plan all along was to pull this shroud off and put my electric fans on and get these alternators done so don't worry we're making it happen it's gonna be a lot better Hey bro, you should do E-Fans, man. E-Fans, I already know. Check this out, we got Brandon from Big Time Auto Electric. Brandon. Out here, Sacramento, California. I've known Brandon for a long time. Comes rolling up in here with the sickest rides. Nothing smaller than a 22 inch wheel. No less than eight cylinders, except, except today. We don't need to go into all that. I might have to go out there here in a minute. But I know who to call when I'm wanting to do something to my Tahoe like this. I'm fully capable of putting electric fans in this Tahoe myself but I don't have any experience doing it. I've never had to do it before. So why not call someone that's done it a million times, someone that knows what they're doing. Matter of fact, I got the advice that I needed because I would have been on eBay looking for some sort of a conversion kit. But the two or three people that I talked to that know exactly what they're talking about, they say, get this stuff sock out of another vehicle that has it and plug it in. That's the only way to go. So that's what we're doing. So what is this out of actually, Brandon? Uh, 03. 03 and up, uh, Tahoe, Silverado, uh, equipped with electric fans, Escalades, Lowry's. Yep, yep, yep. So what are you doing here with this big, huge harness? So the wiring for the fan, it comes out of a, uh, it's all tied into the headlight harness. So strip all the headlight stuff out, get, strip it down to the bare wiring for the fans, clean, all, clean it all up, and install it. All right, so this thing is just gonna plug right into the main computer and be done, and there's not gonna be any aftermarket tapping in trying to make it work type of stuff right right legitimate exactly it's like factory all right man see the thing is i got no experience doing this but when you're all done i'll know exactly what to do but then i won't have to do it anymore 
<laughs> oh, maybe KK's right or something. I don't know. Well, we'll just call you out and have you do it again for us. I'll yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's not about whether or not I can do it, but keeping the next man busy on something that he specializes in is also a good thing. So, I mean, I could paint. I'm not very good at it. I could do upholstery, and I'm not very good at that too. But if I can get somebody else in on what I'm doing, that's always the best thing. That's what they do. You know what I mean? Get it done right the first time. All that stripping back, and this is what we're left with. The meat and potatoes. I knew you would know just what to do, man, when I called you. Yes, sir. Yep. This ain't your first rodeo, is it? Not at all. Alright, so you got a whole nother set of stuff here. What's this for, Brandon? So this right here is the plug that goes into the ECM for the engine. You gotta pull a pin, well two pins out, and put them in the, the computer, the harness that's in the truck. That way uh the, the computer can control the fans like factory. Okay. So this is the last the last we're gonna see of this fan, huh? Yes, sir. Turn it on, let's just look at it real quick. Oh, she's ugly. Should be in the ignition, no? E fans on the way. Quad brackets running good. All right, see you later, old mechanical fan. Nice knowing you. All right, man, do what you do. We're good. Fan removal kit. Hey, I can make that on my fiber laser, I bet. Hey, I'm not kidding. Let's give it a good smack. All right, let me go get that hammer real quick. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See ya. Hey man, it's gone, Brandon. It's gone. <laughs> Out of there. Alright, now what's next, man? So sick. You want to tap it into the ECU? Yep, yeah, about to do the tap in there. Yes, there's the plug. <laughs> So I have these two wires with these two pins. What I gotta do is add add a wire into each plug. One's gonna control fan one, one's gonna control fan two. Just like that, huh? Yes, sir. So once the engine gets up to temperature, or when you kick the AC on, whatever, whatever needs to kick the fans on, the computer knows when to tell it to turn on. Straight like that. So that relay box just snaps right in like it was meant to be, huh? Meant to be. Just like that? Just like that. Run the wires down, connect them in, ground it, pick up the triggers, and we'll go into the tune. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're 
plug, dude. I heard that thing snap. Everything all zip tied up, looking good. Nice and clean. The big time electric way. Yeah. Got a nice little main power wire right here. Nice little crimp. Of course, we use the biggest crimpers on the planet for that little thing, just because I can, and because uh, I wanted to try it out. You guys are gonna be seeing more of this real soon. As soon as I hit that big sky high two watt. You have uh, fuses like this. What? You have any fuses like these? We can go ahead and throw the battery back in now. So a little test to make sure they're working before you finalize it. Yes, sir. Right. Low speed fan. Low speed. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah. I like the way that sounds. Yes, sir. Right, we're good. I'm going to go ahead and finalize that, make the connection here. Boom. Then we'll do the computer side of everything. So what are we doing right now? We're setting all the temperatures? Yep, all the temperatures are set. We're going to do a test run. Those damn things are howling. Nice. So for anybody out there looking, I know I got these little wires on this big ass 14 volt battery. This is just temporary so we can make the truck work. It's all going to be nice soon. Stay yes, tuned sir. for that. But uh, alright, fans sound like they're working good. This thing is not charging yet, so it's running strictly off the battery. Okay. So it should be fine though. Okay. 14 volt battery. Go for it. I'm ready when you are. Alright, so we're gonna let this thing get up to temperature and see if those fans kick on. Make sure it's all working. I'm sure it does after watching you control everything like that. I just turned the AC on and the AC fan kicked on after a couple seconds. So that's all working good. I'm gonna get a little bit of light on the subject real quick. So just waiting for it to get warm enough for that one to kick on or what? Alright, that's second stage. Yeah. They're both they're both on, it's just high speed, low speed. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I think we're probably pretty good enough to wrap this up. All done. Much better, much better. All right, man, we're all systems go or what? All systems go. Man's wired in, computer's tuned up, good to go. Yeah, I love it, I love it, man. Thank you very much, man. You knocked it out of the park. No I knew you would. Hey. I knew I was calling the right person and I'm glad I was right. So, man, good. thank you very much. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Big Time Auto Electric, Sacramento, California. This ain't his first rodeo. He knows what he's doing, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now. That last mod worked very well. Loving it. Electric fans. This cover is supposed to go back over the top of these fuses. And, uh, yeah, it would, even with the new module, because it looks like it was made for it. But I have other plans for this area. So, right now this ain't fitting.
open space right there. I already moved his module. Now it's time to put my own stuff in. I'm really missing the process of cutting it. Oh well. I guess I can find another one somewhere. But I gotta do what I gotta do. snaps still snapped in so basically this whole little top piece is gone now but I'm gonna make a new platform for my other stuff to sit on fasten these things down no problem everything's still clean just yet.
so I am pretty happy with this. It's finally the way I want it. But it's 16 gauge, regular steel, cold rolled. I don't want it to rust. So we're going to turn this into stainless. I do want to make one quick adjustment to this also before I make the final one. Yeah. Mark this off so I know. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this. A couple little changes. I made this two piece so I was able to access the stuff over by the regulators and the harness below it. And after thinking about it for a little while, I decided to open these holes up all the way. That way this whole piece can be taken out without removing 16 2 watt cables. So, a little modification up top. And now, we're going to go with the stainless sheet. So now, it's time to switch this over to stainless and call it done for the day. Start wiring. As you can see, the design changed just a little bit. Some of this stuff's gonna be transferred over to another laser, so it's gonna be deleted for this cut. But you can see what it's looking like.
it in. That platform is pretty much done, ready to go. We got an SMD HB half block and two FB2s. We're ready to start wiring. I don't know how long it's going to take before I get to the big, big wiring. I'm going to have to wire up those regulators first and get this front battery charging and get all this stuff synchronized on this one battery. Once I know that it's all synchronized and working good, then I'm going to send all the cable to the back. So I know this isn't the base that you're waiting for. I know you want that slap, but I got all this stuff to do underneath the hood first before I even think about going that direction. But for right now, that's one badass platform. I'm really excited about this. Friday morning still noisy as ever in this shop we got machines over there doing what they do now it's time for me to get some of this wiring started I'm gonna have to pull this panel off right here I made this three pieces for a reason so I can get to everything below so this whole panel is gonna come off and I can start hooking up those external regulators over there and a couple relays and a couple other little wires when everything's all said and done then I'll put that panel with the step down modules on it back in its spot the next phase of this build isn't going to be exciting at all. It's just tedious wiring. Little wire, big wire, just wire everywhere. It's really not going to be that fun to watch. So we're going to go into time lapse just to let you know that I'm doing the work and so you can see it happening, but to cut the boring part out. Where I'm at so far, we got some zero gauge on the fuse holders and on the grounding block. We got to run them to their spots, and I can mount that back where it goes. Like I said, one wire at a time. So I'm happy.
see we got all the step down modules here. We're gonna go with the blue wire because I only need to drop this down a couple of volts. In case you're wondering what those holes were for when I first designed this, I had some square holes underneath it. Check out the last video I made to see what I'm talking about. That's the reason why. So I don't need all these wires. I'm gonna eliminate the orange one. I'll probably just tuck it away because future use I may need it. I don't know. But we're gonna tap in 14 volt input positive on one side and the step down on the other and that's going to head on over to that other fuse holder right over there and that part will be done i know on your end these wiring videos are boring it's just me with my arms inside of the engine compartment moving stuff around struggling having screws tip over while i'm trying to screw stuff down trying to cut zip ties trying to move wires around two or three times because i'm not happy with it but the best i could do is time lapse and a little bit of beat in the background maybe and just show you that I did the work. It doesn't just happen all by itself. I still gotta do it. So let's dive back into a little bit more time lapse until I get these little modules done. Regulators are in, main power wires are in. The wires ran to the back are not in yet. Don't mind the wiring, we're just testing right now. And it's time to fire this thing up and see how it's doing. We got the Fluke on the left, we got the SMD AMM1 on the right. Regulators are working. The alternators are all working. They're all charging really nice. I got everything set for 17 volts on the dot, cold start. Probably once they heat up and I'm driving around town, 16.5, 16.8, so it'll come down just a little bit. But overall, this is working great. The truck itself doesn't mind being on 17 volts, so I'll probably leave it like that. But I do have two of these things over in the corner that people keep asking me about. They're called excess power step down modules. So one of those fuse blocks right there, it's for 12 volt stuff and this one is for the 14 volt stuff which is basically 14 5 and 17. i use that for my head unit and my processors probably maybe but more than anything i'll have myself an extra spot for sensitive items if need be so i'm just planning ahead and yes the wiring on these alternators right now is super janky only because i'm just testing it out making sure everything's working before i run any big cables all this crap is coming off it's going to be super nice here in a few minutes. Actually, not a few minutes, uh, a few days. But as you can see, we're still charging strong. We're good. Most excellent. I'm gonna switch over to this side. Yep.
Now I'm going to shut the truck off and see what it looks like. Let's jump over here to this side, take a look at it. Back over here. And a nice solid 12.8. So 15.2, 15.3, resting. On the high side, 12.8. On the step down side, just in case I need to use it for something. The rest of the truck can have the 17 volts. It seems to take it just fine. So we're just gonna leave it like that. See how it goes. Next stage, rip all this temporary wiring off of here and make it proper. Send all my two watts to the back. That's what we have so far. Everything's working great. All four alternators are charging super strong, as expected. Step downs are stepping down, as expected. And all I got left to do is run a whole bunch of Sky High car audio, two watt cable, and I got it all right here ready to go. And this ain't even all of it. I got another spool of red and another spool of black on the way. And these are 150 feet each, so that should tell you what's about to happen. The next time you see this truck, I will be running long runs of big cables. If you've been watching, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. I'm out. Two watts, ready to go. 
I'm gonna pop the ends on these things real quick, feed them up. Perfect. With this many to do, I say I put on a show real quick. We'll see how quickly I can strip seven more of these two odd cables. They might as well be three odd in real life. According to these dies, they're a lot bigger than that. One. Simple, easy, and fast. If you ever find yourself wanting one of these and you want to know what the mod is, yeah, that'll be easy. to the alternators and then I can start with my grounds one thing at a time of course I got these things right here that I didn't really mention too much in any photos or videos so I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to use them or not and it looks like I'm gonna be able to so these are alternator adapters and although you probably don't need two two out cables on each terminal one is more than enough I do have a lot of power in the back and the run is kind of long, almost 20 feet each. So while not totally necessary and a little bit of overkill, it's not super out of the ordinary to do something like this, at least not for the people that I know. So these little terminals from Sky High Car Audio, they came in the clutch. I'd much rather have eight two watts running to the back for that long run to that back battery bank than just four. So I've got them on the positives and I've got them on the grounding tab. But just so you know, if you try to do this, this has to be ground down just a little bit in order to fit on the grounding tab. It does go, but I had to grind it a little bit. It's there. Oh, it's gonna look good when it's all done.
that so far. Just now starting the grounds. All the positives are on. I'm gonna configure all this and make it look all nice when it's all together. But we got some ground cable here. Gonna be running eight of these down to the frame. this many ground cables all the way to the back. I took up just about every bit of space I could with all those red cables. Keep in mind, there's a drive line, there's exhaust, there's suspension because this truck is bagged, so it goes up and down. I gotta make sure there's travel without anything pinching, but I have a great solution. I'm gonna attach all these cables right here to this frame, right in the front of the truck. And then in the back, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the exact same amount of wires right up to the rear battery bank and the amplifiers. Basically, I'm using the frame as my run now before you say i'm crazy and i should run my grounds all the way keep in mind the frame is probably the best piece of metal in the entire car maybe not so much a unibody but an actual frame is probably the best means of transportation you can get for a ground in a car so this is totally acceptable if there was any glue joints or anything in the way bad spot welds it would be different but this is pretty solid all the way to the back so this is what we're going to do Got a couple of one aughts I gotta strip, so I made the modification to this die as well. Hopefully it will work just as good. Okay. 
Yeah. Real nice, real nice, real nice. What was that? Definitely about a minute. Top. That's a good crimp or not, because it was so fast and so easy, we tested this. You can tell just by looking at these that they're solid copper now, but my cut is a little bit crappy because this blade, I don't think it likes cutting through that, obviously. This is pretty much what's inside of those right now. That's a solid piece of copper right there. Same thing for the wire itself. the frame right here and attach them and this front side should be done. just to make sure it was halfway centered. I don't want it to be too lopsided. Of course, I got one of my favorite bits right here. This thing drills and taps at the same time. So it should be able to zap all nine of those in there with the quickness and have nice threads to attach every single one of those two. And I'll be done here in a matter of minutes. video of what this looks like up here because my camera doesn't really fit. This is pretty much done. I'm not going to do any zip ties just yet in case I got to bring anything else down here that needs to attach to these. But as soon as I'm at a point where I can lower this thing down to the ground for good, then I'll definitely come in and tie them all together real nice. They're just sitting there real nice all by themselves. There's also a cover, as you saw earlier, that goes over the top of all this. I may not even put it back on. I know it will protect the wires and protect the engine, but this car is not a daily driver, so 
Who knows? I like the way it looks just the way it is. If you look under there, you see all those wires, but I don't know. We'll see. But right now, let's lower this thing down. Let's take a look at what it looks like above. It might need a couple zip ties up there too as well. And then this thing is going to be ready for me to shut the hood and go to the back and start working on all that stuff. days since I've been on this because I had to get back to my shop duties get some things done but now I'm back got 17 volts running through all these wires everything's great everything's working now we just got to get our grounds done went ahead and tapped eight five sixteenths inch holes for these bolts now I just got to crimp some two watt wire some negative and shove it up into the vehicle along with this red and then I could lower this thing down off the lift and start focusing on the rear hatch, everything back there. Got the positives right there. Getting ready to make their last couple of feet before they make their entrance. And we got all the negatives right here. Frame grounds. If you watched the last video, you know where the first set of frame grounds are. They're up front. That's pretty much a done deal. Everything's attached. Everything's looking good. Everything's secure. It's really hard to get any video of what this looks like up here because my camera doesn't really fit. So you're gonna head right up there to that battery bank and to the bus bars. We got a healthy 17 volts coming out of these wires right now. All the alternators are working great. And I'll be working in the hatch soon. Almost there, almost there. Although this truck isn't ready to hit the streets just yet, that old tire can has been driving me nuts. So I'm about ready to upgrade my engine compartment. I don't know if there's gonna be a difference in performance or not, but for right now, it's definitely gonna look better underneath the hood. All right, let's take this thing out. Oh, I'm gonna need my steak knife. Where's it at? Okay. Let's see what this thing looks like. That cane end's been on there for like 15 years. No, man, maybe 2001, one of the first things I did back in the day. So, man, 18, 19 years, so. Time for a refresh. Okay. Tubes. Yeah, much better. That, we got that. We got this. We got Gail's insider news. We got the shirt. Can't wait to wear that one. 
We got some hose clamps, and we got like a little flex flex line, a little attachment. Oh, yeah, didn't think about that. Out of all this stuff, I didn't really forget I needed an air filter. There it is. I could rip that K&N off and put this thing on. So this intake was halfway unhooked already to begin with because we just put the electric fans in. If you saw that video, you know what I'm talking about. So I don't have a lot of disassembly to do before this thing is just going to come right on out. So we're just going to yank this tired old thing right on out of here. I mean, it's still good. I might have to put it on my son's Yukon or maybe we'll just get him one of those banks too. It's still good. It's clean. It's still a tube. It works. But I think the other one's going to look a lot nicer and be a little bit more modern. First things first, you know I got that new shirt on. Appreciate it. I need some new threads always. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull this thing out of here. As I said, it's already halfway unhooked because we did the electric fan. I don't have a lot of work to do here. I forgot about the old Granitelli mass airflow sensor.
All right, as you can see, it's in. It's looking beautiful. It's solid as a rock. It looks great. I can't say anything about the performance because I'm not gonna be able to drive it for a little while. But if it says banks, you know it's gonna be good. But damn, my engine compartment already looks a lot better right now. So far, so good. And we're still uh, pushing yeah. 17 volts all day long. No problem at all. Got the 14 volt excess power batteries. Only one so far. The ones in the back are gonna be hooked up real soon. Got all this sky high double zero. Got the Mechman 400, four of them. Feel those fans blowing real nice. Everything's working really good. Everything's looking good. And I'll have more updates soon. Real soon. stuff in the vehicle now I got to run it over to where the distro bar and the fuse holder is gonna be I think I'm gonna put them in the same spot but in a better situation
the second skin butyl in between the acrylic and the metal. And we got some more second skin damp pro over the top of the original alpha damp, just so it doesn't look so trashy. Looks super nice now. A lot cleaner for something that'll never get seen again anyways. Once and for all, at least for now, I can drop this amp rack down, start running wires on the side. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit and start running some more wires. with an idea, a pair of scissors and some cardboard and about 10 tries. Just keep refining it until it starts to do what you want it to do. That's going to go there. I only have one hand but that's going to go there. And then we got the little fuse box from Spark Innovation is going to go over there for my 12 volt needs. Alright, it's do or die time. I hope this works. If not, I'm going to waste a whole bunch of metal.
my lawn. Nuts. Innovations is going to be perfect for my 12 volt side. Got a couple little things that are going to run off 12 volts. Now they got their own little pieces. Let's see if this thing fits. Rando. I mean, it's almost like it's perfect or something, huh? All right, so this thing is in here. It is, you can move the whole truck by grabbing it. It's strong, it's sturdy. It's pretty. It's time to run some wires.
off time lapse for a little bit just to kind of show you where I'm at. Sparks Innovations, running all the remotes, and I also got it tapped into the 17 volt side for a couple of those fuses. We got my remote buttons, we're good to go. Oh yeah, I give that a little gas, it'll be well in, into the 17s, no problem. They're a little warm, but it's all right. And then we got this over here on the step down. Look at that. So my remotes are seeing a nice 12.5, they don't even know. But really, this is what they're getting. So it works out great, I think. So as you can see, we're pushing a healthy 17 volts, no problem at all. All I gotta do now is start adding fuses. And every time I add a fuse, another amp is gonna come back online. It should work great. Stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that little button, that little notification button at the bottom. Don't miss out. Hopefully, when I turn this on, it'll start playing right away. I think it will. Until then, I'm out. I gotta go get some fuses right now. So as you can see, we're pushing a healthy 17 volts, no problem at all. All I gotta do now is start adding fuses. And every time I add a fuse, another amp is gonna come back online. Sparks Innovations, running all the remotes, and I also got it tapped into the 17 volt side for a couple of those fuses. We got my remote buttons, we're good to go. All I have to do is to play it. Time to slap some ceramic fuses up in here. I'm gonna put 500s on each one. I'm mainly just trying to protect the wire. Might be a little overkill, but it's okay. So we got this one over here. That one's already on, that's the first one I did. And we got juice, bam. Start adding some of these one at a time. Might spark a little bit while it fills the caps up. Should have two amps now. Bam, one, two. That's good. Two amps on. So it's gonna spark a little every time because those caps are super empty. These have been turned off for a long time. Here. One, two, three, bam! There you go, there's three. Bunch more to go. Here we go, a little spark. Ooh. Gotta be careful, man, this thing's hot now. Ready, here we go, let's see. Look at that, one, two, three, four, it's almost like it was meant to be. Four base amps up, four more to go.
terrible. Now all we gotta do is cut these lights off and turn some remotes on and see if they all come on. I hope they do. I think they will. Little cold start. Let's see what's up. So people are wondering where my AC controls and stuff are at. They're right down in here. They always have been. Got this excess power VCM. Doesn't do anything anymore, but just read voltage because I'm controlling my alternators a different way. Got my air ride controller right there. And here we go. Let's see what cold start. Yes, sir, 17.1 still. We're looking at 14.3 on the lower side, and that is just for my remotes and maybe a couple little things. But the truck itself, oh yeah, don't look at that fuel gauge though. Don't even look at that fuel gauge, yeah. Finally get to put the mids and highs amps back on their rack in case you're wondering what it looks like underneath those amps looks like this and uh don't be too judgmental i did this in my backyard like 13 14 years ago no cnc's nothing no sewing machines so these amps that are upside down right now are going to go right there they're already playing but they're upside down and uh, of course 18s. Yeah, but 
is doing what it's supposed to do. I love it. Looks good, works great. But I did a little damage right here on my little fuse box cover. I was snapping some of these little inner pieces off to make room for some wires. And, um, well, I made a hole. So we're gonna fix that right now. Quick and easy, watch this. This is a little something I drew up in the office a little bit ago, brought it out here to the shop. Little lid, little something something. if I like it. I think that'll work. But of course I'm not gonna make it out of acrylic. I'm gonna make it out of stainless or aluminum or something. I just happen to have a nice piece of aluminum sitting over there. Let's try that out. So I'm gonna leave that sitting in the exact same spot that this came out of. I'm gonna cut it out of aluminum, I'm gonna put it right back in here, I'm gonna mark it up, watch. all nice but all I see is Brandon's footprint can you see that on camera dude you serious right now Brandon <laughs> I'm sorry bro dude how I, long it dude is that one of those films you can go off okay. yeah we we'll have to get we'll get some mother's polish we'll maybe be able to clean that off
see it flowing. Can I never just let it go, can I? Bring that thing up to like 2,500 RPM and hold it there. Shut this hood for good for now. And we'll move on to other things. Alright, so the Tahoe's running great. The alternators are turning. Had the RPMs up pretty high. We're slapping it. No belt slip at all right now. Not saying there won't be at some point. We could get the belt hot in the summertime. It could get old, it could get glazed over. I don't know. But for right now, it's grabbing really nice. Not having any problems with it. Before I completely finish up this series, I'm gonna have to put this thing back up in the lift. I gotta tie up some wires, I gotta do some second skin heat shield. Got a little area where the wires are close to the exhaust. They're not all the way on the exhaust, but they're in the area. I'm gonna put some heat shield around that and pretty much button it up. And then this thing's gonna be ready to come down to the ground and I'm gonna be ready to work on something else. Can't wait for that for sure. For now, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Everything's playing, everything's romping pretty good. I just have one little issue with my remote control knob. I don't know if I wore it out over the years. I don't know what's going on, but it's just acting funny. No big deal to me. It gives me a great excuse to try out this new audio control DM608 I just picked up. It's got everything I need optical in. It's got six channels in, eight channels out. Really, with optical in, all I need is the eight out, and I'm good to go. So, let's go ahead and let's take that old processor out. Let's put the new one in and see if I like it. I don't even know if I will or not. But I guess the first thing I need to do is unbox it, show you guys what it is.
I do have a lot of experience with the 810, which is eight channels in and 10 out. I haven't used the 608 yet. It's gonna be the same exact thing, except for just a little bit less channels. And uh, well, six in and eight out, even though I just said the word less, that doesn't matter. That's a lot of channels, period. Let's pull this thing out of here. Let's take a look at it. Gonna have to install the smart DSP app before I start, but then again, I've already got it because I have other audio control products here. No problem. I've got a guitar pick. So let me get the plastic pick. Of course, I'll be using this right here for my input, and everything else will be output. Should be real easy. Everything's already in there, ready to go on the old processor. One little thing I need to put in here is an ACR3, and I've got that ready to go. Right here. Normally, you could just use your deck volume if you need to, but when you're using optical, you lose all ability, usually. To control the volume at the head unit so you need some other way to turn it up and down and that's the ticket right there so time to take the old one out put the new one in actually before i put this new one in i'm gonna have to pull it up on the app and take a look at it and get some settings straightened out that way that thing isn't going bonkers when i first hook it up i want to have my crossovers kind of where they need to be and make sure the optical is set up to receive a signal and all that stuff so let's go ahead and do that right now. Throw this up on Windows 10, any laptop will do. Got the Alienware down here, ready to go. Ready for duty. So we're gonna plug it in, take a look at it, get it set up, and then drop the Tahoe down and put it in. Hopefully I won't have no more problems with that knob. All right, we got a little firmware update we gotta do first. I always gotta keep everything up to date. Good to go. Give it a minute or two. Set all this up. Get the bass going where the bass goes, the highs going where the highs go. Mid range, mid bass, tweets, all that stuff. We gotta tell it before we even hook this thing up. All right, the 608 is on. It's reading. We got activity. Well, let's just start programming it a little bit. So we're gonna go over here. Since I'm using optical, I don't need to use one, two, three, or four. Five and six is the only, five and six is the actual input that the optical would be on. You have to tell this ACR to turn up and down on all the channels. I'm not using it as a bass knob, I'm using it as master volume. So, so in my truck, channel one and two is the tweeters. So we're gonna turn the level control on. Three and four is my mid range. So we're gonna turn that on. Five and six is mid bass. We're gonna turn that on. And I'm only gonna use number seven for the bass. I don't need to use output number eight. So same thing, level on. And since I'm only using five and six, we're gonna uncheck this, uncheck that, and just sum five and six where the optical cable's coming in. As you can see, we got a whole bunch of EQ and we can do later, which we will do. But for now, we got to get it in there and get it playing, get some sound coming up out of it. Okay, so I just spoke to my good buddy Chris over at Audio Control, and he gave me a couple little tips that I didn't really realize. Since I'm using optical, he says open up the top, jump a couple jumpers, actually one jumper, and set the output gain to 10 volts max. Now, I'm not going to use 10 volts out, but I'll have that kind of headroom to be able to turn up a little bit more. So let's do that. Let's take this top off and jump the jumper. I'm plug this so I don't...
Looks like this is gonna be it right here. So take those little jumpers, pop those out. Move them over to the next notch. There's seven. And here's eight. Just like that. Don't necessarily need to do it on the highs channels because uh, there's plenty of amplifier in there. Good to go. I have eight amplifiers on the base, so we need a little bit of extra juice. I guess I'm already ready to put it back together. Crossovers are all kind of set where I want them. We got three and four at 90 to 5,000, 85 to 5,000. I'll probably adjust that a little bit. Five and six. And number seven is going to be subwoofers. Now, if you're wondering where I'm going with this, I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Yep. As much as I'm totally in love with the processor that's in the Tahoe right now, I just can't deal with the volume control knob issues. It's just, maybe it's just me wearing it out from using it so much. I don't know, but I can't have my system turning itself down after I just turned it back up multiple times. So a couple little quirks, a couple little things that uh, I think I'm going to take care of right now with the new audio control processor. It's about time I put something new in here anyways. It's been in here for so long. And considering this thing is on optical and all the outputs are almost in the same spot, this thing should be an easy swap. I've got RCAs hanging right here, but these are the old RCAs before I went to optical, so they're not even doing anything anymore. But let's face it, her auntie really had it going on. Your mic site misses his scalars, but she gave up the action, making her on. Early in the morning on a Saturday, and I'm on a mission for more progress. This thing's not going to be done for a while. I got lots of little tiny things that I want to do, but Saturday, keep it a hobby, keep it fun like it is, and eventually I'll be further along, and hopefully I'll be happy. And so far, I'm very happy. The audio control processor sounds awesome. The truck's running great. The alternators are charging strong. The batteries are doing awesome. Let's clean up some undercarriage stuff. That way I can drop this thing down once and for all. So as you can see, everything's still lovely. Got tons of frame grounds right here. Coming straight from the alternators. That's going to be covered up when I'm all done. They pick back up right over here. Go straight to the batteries and the amplifiers. 
And of course, we got eight two watt positives coming from those back batteries. Up in through here, bundled up nice, and right up through this direction. There's only one little problem. We're about two and a half to three inches away from this exhaust pipe, so not super close, two and a half to three inches. And then those wires shoot right up to the alternators. There's two of those on each alternator right now. It might seem like two and a half to three inches away from that exhaust is really close, and it is, but it's not that big of a deal. It does need to be taken care of though. I'm gonna put a little bit of heat shield over the top in that little area, and it should be no problem at all. Lucky for me, I know exactly what to get. Every time, second skin for the win. Oh yeah, some damp rope, I needed some more of that, but this is what I was really interested in. Look at this heat shield material. All right, so what I have here is some radiant shield. And some thermal block. The thermal block is going to be more for the underbody. This is going to be more for wrapping wires and keeping heat away from things like that. So it's not really rocket science. Put a little bit of radiant shield on the wire. The actual heat source is about three inches away. It only needs to be about two inches away for this stuff to be effective. And well, honestly, there's nothing blowing hot air on it or anything like that. It's just something that's hot that's near it. So this should be no problem at all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of this up and wrap that wire up. That should be good to go. There we go. Oh, I like that. It's going to be good. Yeah, I know the lighting in here totally sucks. Even with the lights, it sucks. So it's up in here. Nice little spot. Oh, it's sticky. So it's dark in here and I got ultra crappy angles, but you can see what's happening. All right, that's all done, feeling good about it. Good three inches away and thermal shield. Got a little bit more to do up in the fender wheel. All right, from down there, we got all those two-watt cables coming straight up through it's not super close to that exhaust manifold. Yeah, we're looking like about seven or eight inches away. It shouldn't be no problem, but I'm gonna wrap some on here anyways, just because I know a lot of heat gathers around this area. So we got grounds right there, coming from the alternators down to the frame. It's all looking beautiful. All right, mission complete. I got a little fender liner I gotta put back in here, so all that's gonna disappear. Well, some of it will. Sunday morning, getting ready to drop this thing down. Yesterday, did some heat shield around some wires that were kinda close. Cleaned up some wiring for the air system, for the air ride, 
used to be all kind of like just okay now it's super nice so really all I have left to do is to put this cover back on that covers these wires I guess it protects the engine and whatever else it does but I'm not gonna do that right now because I want to make this out of stainless but I ain't doing it today but definitely this is gonna be made out of stainless it should be pretty easy to do maybe this bottom cover as well and then I want to do some undercarriage work and clean some of this gunk up it's not super bad for being a 20 year old vehicle almost but I'd like to clean it up while I have it up on the lift for right now it's gonna drop this thing down on the ground turn the beats up see if it's playing right and then I can actually enjoy it and move on to another project cold start 17.07 pretty much 17 on the dot once it starts heating up it'll probably calm down to about 16.7 16.8 maybe a little lower depending on how hot it actually is outside or how much I'm working them but it's still really healthy then over on this side one more look at this before I slam the hood Nice 14 volts on the other side. If you pay attention to what I was talking about in the videos, you know this 14.17 is not for the car. The car is getting the full 17 volts. This is only for the remotes on the amplifiers. In order for most amplifiers to be able to play at 16 volts or higher, you gotta trick it. Show the remotes something less than 16 volts, and then give the rest of the amp whatever you want. So that's essentially what I'm doing. So, nice little 14. Plus I have a 14 volt side if I have any sensitive equipment that needs to go in there that cannot be any higher than 15 or so so it's ready to go the amps last time i checked they were playing i think i should back this thing up out there and turn it up rail on it for a little bit and make sure it's all good and then i can finally close this chapter or at least not close it but put it aside for just a few minutes So I don't have nobody here to do a hair check or anything cool with. You're not gonna be able to tell over the camera how loud it actually is. I'll tell you if it's better or not. But the main thing that I'm worried about is belt slip. Four alternators, got a bracket that I made in the shop. I think it's good, but I don't know yet. So far, no belt squeak at all. I've had this thing up to like 5,000 RPM. Now I just need to bring it up and lay on it even harder than I did before. So. Let's see how it does. Hide in a roller coaster? Yep. Stop. And I'm going to start dumping base and see what happens. So low. So low.
hope that wasn't slipping because that shit is fucking slapping. God damn. I still have a belt. Everything looks like it's still intact. That's a good sign. So far so good. This thing is everything I was hoping it would be. But most of all, it starts, it plays. I don't have to put it on the charger every single day. It's always a good idea to keep your batteries fresh and put them on the charger when you can, just out of the principalities of the situation. But the fact that I could probably let this thing go for a month and not even recharge it is great. My wiring is all brand new and refreshed. The batteries are refreshed. The alternators are brand new. The bracket is brand new. I'm feeling really good about this. I'm not done yet though. I got lots of work to do. I got four more batteries to put along the back. I got some trim work to do to make it look pretty again. I got some other things that I've been wanting to do that I'm going to get into later. I got two volume knobs that need to be mounted in the vehicle and made look good. The ACR3 from Audio Control and I got the little master bass volume that I'm going to put in there somewhere. Nothing's ever really done. I figured till the end of time, as long as I have this vehicle, there's always gonna be something else that I wanna do to it, whether it's changing something old and making it modern again, or just doing something that I've been wanting to do. But either way, this project isn't done yet. I got four more batteries to put in the back. This thing is gonna have 10 Group 31 14 volt batteries in it. I wanted to keep the traditional row in the back like I've always had. We're gonna put four of those batteries back into it and run the cable. And I got a couple other little things I wanna do as well. You know, I always got to use the vice grips because since I've owned this truck, since I started hooking up beat, I've always had a ton of deadener on this rear door hatch. It's heavy and these shocks do not like it. So if you don't know what we've got going on here is that rack underneath the bottom has all the amplifiers. They're all chambered up with fans pulling air in and blowing air out connected to an SMD TM1 to monitor their temperature. And these blocks right here, those are originally put in to help hold the trim piece that goes over the top of the batteries which is sitting up there on the shelf right now it's ugly so i'm not zooming in used to look good but i got some changes i want to make we're going to make it cleaner we're going to make it nicer yes for sure i do want to build a new box i want something really super nice back here but i also just want to get this truck functioning i want to get it back to where it was before the other batteries got old and died out to be honest i really love this box there's nothing I don't love about this box. It does wild hair tricks for being in the cargo area. Almost as good as a lot of walled vehicles can do. There's probably at least 10 gallons of resin in this box and yards and yards and yards of Nitex fiberglass. So, so this box is strong and that's the reason why it's stood the test of time over all these years. Like I said, I do want a new one. I just want my old truck back the way it was. And then we can talk about other stuff when I'm done doing other things over there. All right, enough of that. Let's grab the final four excess power, 14 volt group 31 batteries to match the other ones to make it 10. Everything's still proper, everything's still working good. Belt's in perfect condition. Not even a mark on it. Been playing with this system a little bit, making sure it's all working, and it is. And of course we got the final four batteries right here. Sitting on the concrete, ready to go. They'll be fine sitting on the concrete. This isn't the battery out of your grandpa's Model T. This is 2020, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. Of course, I took the ropes off these a long time ago. Now I get to pick them up the hard way.
starting to look like the old Tahoe now. But better. Out with the old, hopefully in with something new. So instead of using that tired old trim piece, I'm gonna make a brand new one. Can't get mad. Work first. All right, here we go. So I'm not 100% sure how I want to bring this thing back. I like the way it was. I just want to make it nice again, solid, clean. So been over there on the laser, a little bit of cardboard, trying to get these angles just right. Feel like it's going to be good. It's fit in here really nice. Something like that. As you can see, I've been putting in work, doing my little drawings, my little scratch paper until I get it right. So I know these pieces right here fit. A little curve is what I was worried about. So now that I know what those fit, I can spread these apart and start working on my little piece. So now that that's looking good, time to grab a piece of acrylic and put it over the top. One of the problems I was having before is that my labels would always get scratched up. So hopefully that won't happen this time. The acrylic might, but the labels won't, so that'll be good. It's not staying like this. This is just the idea, the direction I'm headed. A nice little clear cover for the batteries. No more scratchy scratch. Well, it may not be something worth talking about just yet because it's cardboard and it's wrinkly and it's flimsy. It gives me an idea what's actually going on with my logo, the attachment points so I can kind of keep it all in one piece, and fitment and everything else. So I'm going to go in the office, make a few changes, and come out here and put this on some acrylic. Right now I think this might be my best bet.
I look at it is even if I ruin it, I'll have a badass excess power sign that I can pop out of here and use for something. More than likely I will ruin it at least once before I get it right. Or twice. good the excess power the little donut in the O and the R and the P is missing but that's okay because I can put them back in and uh, actually I plan on using other colors now that I have this logo ready to go I can put whatever color I want inside that excess and I think I'm gonna do it I'm not sure what color I'm gonna do yet though all right so I messed that first one up paid the price because I ended up scratching it so time to make a new one and this time I'm not taking the paper off until it's so this finished. This is what I have so far. Those top cutouts are going to have inserts in them later. But for right now, everything's looking good. Go test fit in the Tahoe. All this lettering is stuck to the glass really nice. It's not moving, it's not flimsy, especially on the little sharp points. And now I can go ahead and cut the exact same pattern out of other colors and drop it right in to those empty spots. I'll make that excess power really pop. And then I've got this clear acrylic right here. I'm thinking I may just put one more layer of eighth inch in this little hole. This way it's completely flush. There's no eighth inch lip or anything like that. Not that it's a bad thing, but it just gives it that little final touch. These top pieces are going to have stainless grill inserts with the SMB logo and all that in the center I decided to cut them out of this and then I'm gonna put them back in once I cut them out of stainless or, or aluminum now that three-quarter inch platform that it's sitting on right now is kind of rigged up that is gonna get attached to this and then I'm gonna make some stainless steel brackets and it's all gonna to attach to those so that's coming up next
As you can see, the excess power looks good. Just gets a little bit lost, a lot of stuff going on. It's cool and all, but it's not going to be real cool until I put a red border around it. Detail, detail. Now this is all going to be bonded in place once I'm happy with it. So keep that in mind. But so far so good. Got this big one right here to replace with some color. I'm going to do that right now. Alright, so I'm going to have to do some carbon fiber for that little insert right there. And I don't have any carbon fiber acrylic. So I'm going to have to make some. Yep. Made my own pattern real quick. As you can see here, I just kind of drew my own little carbon fibers. Then I overlaid my piece over the top and then took out what I didn't need. Not bad for freestyle. Triangle out of here. Like that. These three little pieces. It kind of looks like carbon fiber. So we're going to pop this little thing in here. And of course, we got this. Went ahead and etched these letters so they're kind of gray and they will sit inside of that white border.
from the back side, so you can't feel anything no matter what. for the final touch, my little pieces that go in there. I'll be the first to say this is a very underwhelming neon blue. I have other neon colors that glow like crazy underneath the black light. This does almost nothing. But it is bluer than the clear stuff, so I think it'll be perfect for this job. Some nice little light ghosting. So everything's came together real nice, but it's all still loose. So time to take it apart, glue everything back in place, and then I can bring it back over for good. All right, if it was hard to believe that this thing is 50 pieces when I was talking about it, here's some proof right here. You can count them all. There's so many pieces in here. So including the whole rack, it's 50 pieces. But the rack is only four of those 50. So, yeah. Every single time I look at this, I see another thing that I can do to another small touch, another detail. But to be honest, I need to just get this thing done. I have other stuff to do. And this is never going to get done if I don't stop splitting hairs on all the little details. I got my work cut out for me. But as long as I don't ruin this, I'll be good to go in about an hour. Time for some more time lapse.
stuff. The only piece I lost was this little guy. I literally had to fire the laser up, turn the chiller on, exhaust, everything, and make this little guy right here because I lost it. But I'm not complaining because I am about done with this. Put a little drop of solvent in here. If you notice that I always squeeze this first and then I apply, it's because you don't want this thing dribbling everywhere. So you squeeze everything out of it and then you can turn it upside down. Put a drop or two in it. And then when you lift it up, it's still got the suction action. So put this little guy in there. My final little piece. Get in there full. There we go. Done. All those letters are finally in. That was quite stressful. Praying that I don't spill something on the front of that acrylic because it's ruined if you do. But I got away pretty good. A couple little thumbprints, but they should wipe off. So one last look at this thing. I'm going to pop it into the back and then we got some wiring to do. Let's go slap it in the back. One last little quick little look. When I first started this video, I had all intentions of running all the wires and that was my thing. But when I took one look at the old trim piece, it used to look good back in the day, but it's taken a beating over the years. I just knew I couldn't leave it like that. So this video is obviously all about the cover. It's done. The lettering is in. Nothing's moving. It's looking as good as I could ever hope for it to look. If I had to do it twice, there's a couple things I would do different, but overall I like it. So now onto the battery wiring, onto the excess power built in onboard charger, and I got some trim pieces that go on the sides right there. And who knows what kind of ideas I'm gonna come up with as I'm rebuilding the back area here. So stay tuned for that. And for now, I'm out. I have no idea the direction I'm going with this. None. Well, I mean, kind of, a little bit, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. But just in case it does, I want to show you this little part. People think it's all laser. It's all pushing buttons, but everything I do, everything that you've seen so far, starts out like Frankenstein. And it gets refined until it looks like this. So, well, hopefully it works. If it does, you're going to see more of this video real soon. Well, this is just the basis of what I'm doing. Of course, it's going to need to be refined even more, and then I'll scan it or I'll take a picture of it and scale it out and turn it into something that the laser can see. 
And we'll make an even better version. See how these things fit. Hopefully they do. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh yeah. All right, these are beautiful. Maybe you're wondering what those square holes were all about. Why would someone just put a bunch of square holes in the middle of their piece? Let me see if I can get these out of here. I'll give you a little hint since I was already over here trying this out to make sure that it would work. This is why. That's right. The Neo Magnet trim panel still coming into play. That's the reason why I used 16 gauge cold roll instead of stainless or aluminum this time. It's nice and clean. I can brush it. I can do anything I want with it. Maybe just clear coat it, clean it up and clear coat it and it's able to grab the Neo Magnets just fine. So let's go grab a little pile of these things. We got Neo Magnets for days over here. Every size you could think of, I always over order. That way I have extras for more new projects. When I want to make something like this, check this out. I still have centerpieces to make, but I gotta see what these things look like attached. Alright, what do we got here? Okay, this one first. I think that's that one. Alright, they just grab. <laughs> They're so strong. If you're wondering why I didn't just glue those on there and make them permanent, there's a reason. If you notice these Neo magnets, they have a hole in the middle of them. So the same fasteners that I'm going to use to go through this magnet to hold it onto that piece, which they don't really need to be held on because they're in there really tight, tighter than I expected. But those fasteners are going to go through this piece and into that box and hold everything in place. These trim panels actually hide those fasteners. They attach onto the Neos that are attached to the fasteners and it's a done deal. I can still reach back there with my nail. Probably gonna take some sort of a tool, like a little screwdriver or a pick to grab onto it. But once you get a hold of it, you could pull it off. And I don't think the base is gonna pull that off at all. There's plenty of Neo magnets holding that on and it's strong. We'll find out if it flaps. Well, I guess then uh, we'll have to take drastic measures, but Neo magnets are no joke. If you know what Neo magnets are, you know this thing ain't moving. But I'm pretty excited about this. I think I better go there and cut some acrylic. Those little inserts are begging to be put in. So if you're tired of lasers, you might wanna pull the rip cord right now because we got more lasering to do. At least two more pieces.
bottom holes are tapped to thread it up for a nice little 8x32 screw and I'm going to do the same on top of this little bracket here as soon as the piece is in. this thing where I want it I'm ready to hook up wires put the cover on it never to open it again for hopefully a good long time got some sky high 2 watt got some shock industries 8 watt I got to use a little bit of it even if it's a short run and we got some copper bars to try to link all this stuff together before it heads over there to the old fuse holder as seen in previous videos. Alright, so something like this here. This here. Offset. Offset. On the strip, cut some wire, get our crib game on. Too hot. Now it's time for the missing link. The Shock Industries 80 from the last battery to the distribution bars. Now that's a cable. 16,000 strands, that should do it. There's some cable right there. There's three and a half one aughts in this thing approximately. So there's some serious copper going on. Right, a big ass cable like this needs a big ass ring terminal. Look at how big this thing is.
Big ass ring terminal. Baby! I ain't going nowhere. Put some heat shrink on them bad boys. Batteries are wired up, batteries are part of the system, everything's tied into the front, everything's tied into the other five batteries underneath the bottom. We're good to go. Got a couple trim panels to do up top, one on each side. I gotta fasten this new little beauty panel to the front, and I got a couple more little tricks up my sleeve to make this look even better. Okay, that's all in, that's all wired up on me. I got one more thing to do before I end this video. Yep, time to say goodbye to the vice grips, just for a couple of months anyways, till this thing starts sagging. So I'm leaving my shop the other day, and someone pulls up behind me and says, Hey man, I seen you're using vice grips to hold up your hatch. I got these for you. I'm like, uh, hatch shots? Oh, uh, you're the man. Hey, shout out to Manny Fresh. Appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot, dude. That was awesome. Let's slap these bad boys on. It's been a long time since I've seen that before. Got these things color matched. Paint by Jay. Hell yeah. Let's see how they look, man. I got this thing all fastened on there. This thing is not going anywhere. It's strong. And I got this here. Color matched ring. Color matched trim. I'm trying not to put my big thumb on it. Is it all baked and dry? Oh yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That was fast. around yeah look at that oh that's clean yeah it's super clean i like that i haven't seen another one okay, so this one 
Yep. Well, since it's magnet to metal, they don't sell thinner like it would if it was magnet to magnet. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Hey, yeah, fire into the groove. Alright, I like that, man. Yeah, I like that new cherry accent. cherry inlays. Look at that. Yeah. Okay, I still gotta make these things permanent. But for now, let's take up my handprints all over them and spray it down and Alright, I had to actually finish this video with my iPhone because I left my good camera at the house. But Jay came over and shot these for me on a Saturday. So, had to make sure that uh, I get over here. Get a little video. Jay, thanks, man. Looks dope. Hell yeah. Pink by Jay. I'm going to have to make some new pieces. That one fell out a couple times. Got a little chip on it. But they're not permanent yet. They're going to be. And I got a couple more little trim pieces to do before this is finished back here. But for now, I am out of here. All right, finally got the 28s on there. Everything's looking good. Man, 400 amp alternator still kicking in hard. Seventeen volts.
Yeah, everything's good in here. Everything's playing just like it's supposed to. But does it still bump? Does it still do hair tricks? Let's find out. Let's go get Mrs. Me. Back from a leave of absence, got the blood to sleep. Cause they dusty, man, they dirty, man, they are trying to sneak. They can go down at any time. Hey, this thing is beating hard as ever right now. 